Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Voters in some areas will have to show proof of identification before being allowed to vote in a new government pilot scheme. The plan will be trialled in local elections in 2018 before a decision on whether to roll out the measure across the country is taken. Live in Westminster, our chief political correspondent, John Craig. Uh, John, this is going to be trialled first. In 2018, yes, there are elections in uh, most of the urban areas uh, that year, including the London boroughs, and it's going to be largely a lot of uh, areas where there's a big Asian population, for example, Blackburn, Bradford, uh, Luton, Slough, Tower Hamlets and so on. This has all come about because of, uh, 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 of anger at some of the worst scandals that have happened in voting fraud in recent years. Probably the worst, or one of the worst, was in Birmingham. A few years back, a judge said uh, there was a, a racket there going on that would disgrace a banana republic. In Tower Hamlets a couple of years ago, well, last year, in fact, um, there was a, a, a scam uh, which led to the, uh, the uh, corruption was so bad the result had to be overturned. So David Cameron asked uh, Sir Eric Pickles, former cabinet minister, former council leader himself, to look into all this. He's come up with some recommendations. The government now says it's going to accept them. There are three main proposals of which the ID proposal, showing some form of ID when you turn up to vote, is by far the most controversial. Uh, the others include new powers for election officials and police to tackle intimidation of voters. Thirdly, uh, tougher rules on uh, postal voting, which many believe is open to abuse. Uh, the Labour Party in the last few minutes has said that uh, using ID is like taking a sledgehammer to crack a nut, potentially denying a vote to millions. Now, they quote some Electoral Commission figures that show that 3.5 million electors, 7.5%, 7.5% of voters wouldn't have the right sort of ID. These concerns are shared by the Electoral Reform Society and they complain or claim uh, that the proposals might put some people off voting. There's going to be some changes to the way people go and vote when they go down to their local ballot uh, polling station. Then we need to be sure that there's a big problem before we put a big answer in place. And what we worry about is that maybe more people will be turned off from voting because of the restrictions than the alleged amount of fraud that's taking place. Well, Sir Eric Pickles got into some bother when he said that... Uh, 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 fraud had been allowed to take place in some Muslim, Muslim areas because of political correctness. The Electoral Commission did, in fact, talk about vulnerable South Asian communities as well. The government, though, is going to reject the criticisms of the likes of the Electoral Reform Society. They make the point, uh, Chris Skidmore, a junior minister, said today, we already asked people to prove who they are in order to rent a car, buy a mortgage or travel abroad. We should uh, take the same approach to protecting voters. And so 2018, the first trials in a dozen or so boroughs, and then, of course, general election 2020. Well, will we all have to uh, show one of these, either of these, when we go to vote? It's this proposal for ID uh, identification when you turn up to vote is the most controversial and one that the Labour Party and others uh, want to oppose. And Ken Livingston, for example, today has said it's an overreaction to the problem. Cheers, John. Joining me now is the uh, former Communities and Local Government Secretary, Sir Eric Pickles. So, uh, so, Eric, I'm right in thinking that this was your suggestion that we should start a pilot programme like this, correct? Yeah, that is correct. Um, it was part of a series of recommendations I made to government in August of this year, and today's announcement is their response to my report. Why do you think it's necessary? Well, it's easier uh, to... Uh, vote than it is to collect a parcel uh, from the post office if you're picking up something for it, say, from Amazon. And um, we've been warned by international observers that um, Britain's system is peculiarly vulnerable to fraud because it's, it's largely based on trust. And this rather modest proposal would make it, I think, um, a little easier to ensure that people who don't have a right to vote or, or have stolen your ballot paper or have stolen your identity can vote on your behalf.
Now, you call it rather modest, but the criticism of this is that the kind of person that may not have this kind of ID to hand may be in the poorest sector of society, and therefore this is a political-based uh, judgment to try to disenfranchise the poorest in society, which uh, one would imagine would benefit the Conservatives. Well, I think that says more about the people who would suggest that than it does of what the uh, government is, uh, is trying to do. Uh, certainly, the idea of the pilots is to ensure that everybody has some form of identification. That's why we're piloting it. And we're not stuck at driving licences or passports. Um, we'll look at uh, utility bills. We'll look at student ID. We'll look at, uh, at transport uh, passes. We'll look at passes that people have for work. Um, and I think... Um, we should be able to cover anybody, and if we can't cover everybody, we'll find ways in which we can. Do you think that this pilot scheme should target specific communities? Well, it, it will be uh, on a voluntary basis. So we will look uh, to get uh, volunteers uh, from uh, different uh, local authorities. Uh, it's something that the... Um, uh, that the Electoral Commission has been wanting uh, government to do for some um, considerable time. You understand why I'm asking this question. You got into trouble yourself when you suggested that uh, this kind of voter fraud may be uh, more prevalent in areas uh, perhaps where there are Muslim communities, and you uh, were suggesting uh, that that hadn't been addressed, you thought, because of political correctness. I'm not sure I got into trouble. Um, uh, I'm a blunt person, and uh, I think for too long we've pussyfooted around this. Uh, that isn't a reflection upon, uh, uh, upon Asian communities. Indeed, uh, voter fraud um, appears in all kinds of uh, uh, settings. But we have to admit that it did stop um, proper investigation uh, in, uh, in Tower Hamlets. Uh, uh, because of people's fears that it might be misinterpreted. And I think that uh, uh, the law does need to be blind to uh, ethnicity. It's got to ensure that it protects uh, everybody. And if we are um, worried, we shouldn't be frightened that we're going to offend people by putting in these relatively easy and modest measures. So if these uh, pilot schemes take place and it is deemed on further investigation that perhaps uh, some people were disenfranchised, would the results then be null and void? Well, if, uh, if, it, if it puts people off voting, if it defranchises people, then it would be working in exactly the opposite direction as intended. These pilots are intended to find ways and to ensure that everyone can vote. I mean, everybody can pick up a parcel from the post office. I think uh, the idea that some people will be disadvantaged is bogus. Uh, uh, it will mean that fraudsters won't be able to steal your identity. It will mean that people can't steal the election from you. And it's a very modest process. If you go tomorrow to pick something up from the post office, wouldn't you be a bit alarmed that anybody could come through the door and pick up that parcel without showing identity? So, do you understand, though, why people such as the former London Mayor Ken Livingstone are so angry about these proposals? Do you think that uh, they're just trying to whip up a, a storm where there is none? It doesn't take very much to make Mr Livingstone angry, um, but I understand he's no longer a member of the Labour Party. I understand that the Labour Party are broadly supportive of the reforms that I'm suggesting. So, Eric Pickles, uh, thank you very much indeed. Now, the Labour MP for Bermondsey and Old Southwark, Neil Coyle, joins us now for uh, Westminster. Mr Coyle, thanks very much for coming in. I mean, this seems to be perfectly commonsensical. I mean, every day we, we use our uh, forms of ID to engage in the simplest of transactions. Do you have a problem with this? Uh, no one has a problem with making sure that anyone who's seeking to vote in an election is eligible to do so. Where, where, where I have a concern is the sort of cynical motivation of the government. We've already seen this is a government that denied 16 and 17 year olds a vote in the European referendum. It's a government that's trying to rig electoral boundaries in its favour to gain 30 seats at the next election. It's a government that's using an out of date register and introduced individual voter registration which, which knocks more than a million people off the electoral register. So anything that prevents uh, more people uh, exercising their democratic rights should be, uh, we should be sensitive to. And there are, I think the Electoral Commission has evidence 
confidence that there's about three and a half million people in this country who don't have a passport, don't have a driving licence, and the government needs to be clear about how it will ensure that no one who can and, and should be able to vote um, is denied that chance because they don't have photographic ID. But as I understand it, I mean, they're talking about different forms of ID. So, I mean, they're talking about a wide spread of them. So surely that would limit the number of people who you claim could be disenfranchised. Well, there aren't, there aren't that many forms of photographic identification. And as I say, if the Electoral Commission knows there are three, three and a half million people who don't have uh, the main two, a passport and a driving licence, then we need to be cautious about the government's motivation. And as I say, I'm, I'm cynical because this is a government that is seeking to distort how we run our democracy in it. In in the Conservative Party's favour. OK, you're claiming a, a political motivation, but the Electoral Commission is not political and the Electoral Commission is backing this scheme. The Electoral Commission is overseeing it. I wouldn't say it supports it. And as I say, it's the Electoral Commission that has that evidence about three and a half million people not having photographic ID. And I, and I think it's the Electoral Commission or the Electoral Forum Party, one or the other, who've also said that in the uh, general election last year, there were only about 20 instances of fraud out of 46 million potential voters. So, again, you've got to look at why is the government seeking to introduce this at this stage? And if it's for political advantage, then I'm, I'm um, very dubious about this government's motivations. But isn't it important that when we go into the ballot box that that uh, there is this sense that everything is, is being done to ensure there is no voter fraud, that, that this will remove any particularly unpleasant stench perhaps around the process? Absolutely. We, we need to have confidence in our democracy and, and the Labour Party believes that we should encourage more people to vote, more people to be on the register. But that is not the back, uh, you know, the, 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 the history of this government. And it, it is fixing boundaries. It's denying young people a chance to vote in, in the most important issue affecting their futures for you know, generations, in effect. The, you know, this is not a government that is, uh, has a good track record of, of enhancing democracy. This is, looks to me, uh, may, perhaps I'm being very cynical, but it looks to me like another attempt to try and prevent some people from voting and those people are potentially those who don't have uh, a passport or, or driving license tend to be at least well off and potentially uh, uh, Labour voters so I, I'm just dubious about the government's motivations on this occasion. Neil Cole, thank you very much indeed. The government has defended its proposal to make some voters in England show ID before casting their ballot, saying it will preserve the integrity of the electoral system against fraud. Trials will be conducted using a range of methods during the 2018 local elections, but critics believe the pilot schemes could deter some people from voting at all. Here's our political correspondent, Carol Walker. These were the scenes when Lutfa Rahman was elected mayor of Tower Hamlets in East London two years ago. The people of this borough, I said all along, will judge me on my record. But he was accused of corruption and illegal practices and thrown out of office amidst claims of voter fraud and intimidation. Now the government is to try out new plans requiring voters to present photo ID or proof of address in some local elections in England in 2018. When it comes to ensuring people from vulnerable backgrounds, vulnerable communities given the right to vote. We're determined that everybody should have their say. And one of the reasons why we're bringing this measure in is to ensure that no one faces undue influence or intimidation. And actually that individual person has the right to cast their ballot in an election for the person they're choosing. It follows a review of election rules by the former cabinet minister, Sir Eric Pickles. His report said authorities were turning a blind eye to corruption and the worrying and covert spread of electoral fraud. He accused some authorities of a state of denial, failing to tackle alleged vote rigging because of political correctness. And he said there was evidence of pressure put on vulnerable people to vote according to the will of elders in some communities of Pakistani and Bangladeshi background. The government has accepted many of the report's recommendations and says it wants to protect anyone who's at risk of being bullied or tricked out of their democratic rights. Though the case here in Tower Hamlets captured the headlines, there were fewer than 700 allegations of electoral fraud in 2015, a year in which more than 51 million votes were cast and just a handful of people were actually convicted. Critics say the government's response is disproportionate and could deter some people from voting. Some Labour MPs believe the government has a hidden agenda. It's a generalisation, but if you accept that uh, more people who don't have a uh, passport or, a, or a driving licence are likely to be from poorer communities and that people from those poorer communities are more likely to vote Labour,
then yes, absolutely, I think this does disproportionately affect uh, potential Labour voters. The evidence shows most elections in the UK are free and fair, but ministers believe they do need to do more to ensure people have confidence in the system. And if the trials are successful, all voters may have to show proof of ID before they can vote in the next general election. Carol Walker, BBC News. Here, the government's been accused of trying to deny poor people the vote under new plans to combat electoral fraud. In several pilot areas in England, voters will be required to show identification at polling stations during local elections in 2018. If successful, the scheme could be rolled out across the country. But as our deputy political editor Chris Ship reports, Labour say it's unnecessary and intended to prevent people voting for them. No matter what kind of polling station you vote in, a community centre, a caravan or a castle, you do not currently need ID to do it. But after a limited number of cases of fraud, the government has announced a trial. In 2018, voters will be asked to show a passport or a utility bill to prove they are who they're meant to be. But already the plan has run into criticism that it will mostly hit poorer voters and Labour voters. Just like uh, last year when they said everybody had to register themselves, not just one person in the family. We saw about a million people kicked off the voters list. This will take more poor people off the voters list and that's really what it's about. One of the most high profile cases of fraud happened in the London borough of Tower Hamlet. Lufter Rahman was elected mayor but later removed from office. A court found there were corrupt and illegal practices including the casting of invalid votes. The voting fraud unearthed in this part of East London was serious, but perhaps the bigger question is whether it is widespread, or at least widespread enough to require every single voter in the country to produce one of these when heading to the polling booth. They asked right. me to bring your passport. I'll bring my passport, because yeah. I'm not hiding anything. But That's there's some feel. concern that if you're a Labour voter or you might not have ID, for example, you might be less inclined to go vote. Yeah, it's probably part of the overall uh, strategy. To, to, what, yeah. to, to reduce the number of Labour yes. votes? Yes. <laughs> and one voter told us she suffered from another type of electoral fraud. When you get go to voting, you get um, a lot of people trying to uh, misdirect you and mislead you to right. vote other parties. But obviously I go in there... This is outside the polling booth, yes, is it? Yes, I get it quite a lot because they think, you know, oh, she's Asian, let's try and provoke her. Stopping harassment around polling stations will be considered alongside proof of ID. When it comes to the potential risks of electoral fraud, that the government listens and takes action before it's too late. That actually when we look at other countries, whether it's Germany, Switzerland, Canada, Brazil, all these countries have ID when it comes to elections. But three and a half million people here don't have photo ID, so many say it will affect turnout. Chris Shipp, ITV News, East London. Electoral fraud. It's thought places that have had a problem with voter fraud in the past will be selected for the pilot in 2018. But critics say voter ID won't stop fraudulent practices and could disenfranchise parts of the electorate, as Jane Deeth reports. Off to vote, you might need your passport. If a dry run in some local elections goes well, all voters in England could have to dig out either photo ID or proof of address to do their democratic duty. The government says it wants to make sure no one can impersonate you and steal your vote. The pilot will probably include London's Tower Hamlets, where this former mayor was found guilty of electoral fraud. Critics say asking for ID is an overreaction. The big issue with electoral fraud, as we know from repeated cases of people being prosecuted, is not personation at the polls. There's very little evidence of that. It's uh, misuse of the postal vote, which ID would do nothing to address. And it's been pointed out millions of voters don't have any photo ID. Just like uh, last year when they said everybody had to register themselves, not just one person in the family. We saw about a million people kicked off the voters list. This will take more poor people off the voters list and that's really what it's about. The government insists the pilot will find a way to protect democracy and people's votes. Jane Deeth reporting.